As uh, LaFranco introduced us, uh, I'm Helen Black and Yanis, and we're the founders of the NGO Me. But before I actually speak about it, I'd also like to thank LaFranco and Janice Jeffries for organizing this event. It's a pleasure for us to be here. Um, what I'd like to do first is just quickly uh, speak a few words about me and uh, then show you a little bit about the projects we've done and then I'll finish off very, very briefly with the Through the Roadblocks project um, and then I'll pass it over to Yannis to present uh, the Cyprus contemporary art situation. Okay, so I will go. Okay, um, we founded LEAM in 2004, so it's a very young NGO, and it's essentially a very small NGO in that we, we've only got 30 members, and out of those 30 members, probably four or five actually work for LEAM. Um, we founded LEAM because we're Limassol based in Cyprus and the reason why we founded it is that we felt that there was no platform for collaborative projects and certainly collaborative projects that use critical theory as their starting point. So we felt that there was a need there and we founded, it, founded LEAM and we're actually very small NGO but with a very loud voice and we're achieving quite a few things. As you can see here, we work on, a, on a two platforms, a, a virtual and an itinerant platform. We don't have our own space. We have our meeting where we have a boardroom where we meet and, and a library and a residency but we don't have an, a large exhibition space. So we constantly move around and collaborate with others for an exhibition space. Um, I'll go to the next one. We, one of the very important things that we do is that we have online um, publishing of uh, posting of texts. And we have a very good selection of uh, theoretical articles focusing on new media. So, uh, which we give preference to. On the itinerant platform is the IMCA, which is the um, uh, Independent Museum of Contemporary Art. And uh, this uh, platform presents names physical projects, which includes exhibitions, publications, performances, lectures, workshops. We have archives as well as an arts library. And we also have a space, like a flat, for short-term residencies. We also have uh, free community workshops, and it means situated in the inner city centre, the old part of Limassol, where there are a lot of uh, families, Syrian families, um, Turkish Cypriot, not so much Turkish Cypriot, but Anatolian family, Anatolians who've moved to the Turkish north and then moved south. And um, they're usually for disadvantaged families, so, so we have, um, every summer we have uh, community classes for them, and the children get together and decide what they want to learn. And we also conduct um, uh, computer lessons and basic computer skills for adults and all these are free and funded by me. Just a quick look at some of our selected projects. Um, we have an annual event called Idea Drone which is focusing on uh, Cypriot video makers and we um, exhibit that at the end of the oldest remaining wooden pier in Cyprus in Limassol, sorry, and this attracts a lot of uh, 
people because it's in the, usually in the summer, in the evening, and there are a lot of fishermen that come around and they watch the videos too while they're fishing and it's quite a lovely atmosphere. It's just a few more shots. Okay, we always, um, just before I uh, tell you what this is, one main objective of NEEM is that we only support collaborative projects. We never support solo shows or um, one-person proposals. It always has to be collaborative, and that's been a stipulation right from the beginning. Of course, this unless we um, organise conferences, in which case we cannot <coughs> ask the speaker to do a collaborative presentation, although this year we're going to try to do that. This is uh, some shots from an exhibition we did called In Transition, which is an ongoing project. It started in 2006, and usually every two or three years we have it in a different country. This was a um, collaboration with the National Center of Contemporary Art in Moscow, in Ekaterinburg, as well as the Museum of um, Modern Art in Ekaterinburg and the Ural State University at Ekaterinburg. In Transition basically is a project constantly in transition and dealing with all forms of displacement. It's very open, I mean we've had, uh, it, it covers any form of displacement from political and social gender. In, um, we had a very interesting project in Russia that was uh, dealing with cattle migrations. So it's, it's a very open-ended um, project and it's an ongoing project and we're now working to possibly have one in Cuba to be working with an American curator to that. Um, this is part of the um, conference at the Ural State University and this is also um, the presenting of uh, projects at, uh, at the university there um, on um, new media, web art projects with the idea of displacement. This is the first in transition <coughs> that we had in Limassol in 2006. And here are other images of other projects and seminars that we've had. Just to give you a feeling of uh, what we've accomplished so far. This was a, an interesting exhibition on the Greek poet Yanis Ritsos that uh, it was his um, centenary in 2009. So uh, we did a homage to Yanis Ritsos and his poetry and we actually brought people who knew him very well and they spoke about their experiences with the poet. And the, the, right at the front of the image you see rocks that he would pick up and painted me, we met a lady who had a, a friend who was a very close friend of his and she had a wonderful collection of the rocks that he painted. So uh, we exhibited those also. Um, now, this is um, an image from 2010 and it's the first a networking meeting of through the roadblocks that Lefranco had um, mentioned earlier and this seminar falls within the framework of through the roadblocks. It's actually um, the concept of the, if you, the general concept of the project started in a um, an aeroplane trip from Limassol to Ekaterinburg in November 2008. And what we felt um, it was uh, myself, Peter Lissiotis and George Alexander, um, two Australian based, but one's a, a writer, curator, and Peter's a book maker. Um, the three of us had decided that it would be incredible to do a project, that a collaborative project, that tried to find similarities in the Eastern Mediterranean region. And this was in context to um, 
all the press the, and the international concern with Iraq and also the way that the Western media was actually um, compartmentalizing um, Muslims and Islam. And so we felt that it would be lovely at being Cyprus based and, and Cyprus actually has the unique historical position of being genus like and that we look both to the east and the west. It's been a traditional uh, shipping route and of course it's got an incredible history of uh, being from being uh, owned by the Ptolemies of Egypt to the Persians, uh, later uh, Ottomans, and of course the British, ancient um, the, the Achaeans. Um, we've had an incredible rich history that forces us to both look east and west. And we, we felt that we started off um, looking at similarities, and we used the Bulgarian filmmaker. Adele Piva, we used, as she did this wonderful film in 2003 called Who Is This Song? Whose Is This Song? And it was actually dealing with one tune that in Bulgaria, in Greece, the Balkans, uh, the Middle East, it was a, a recurring a tune that all the people in the different countries felt that it was their national song. And it was just lovely the way the music had travelled. And of course, um, we also know that in Cyprus, the medieval, a lot of the medieval music of Cyprus, has, it's, it's almost like listening to uh, British Isles, uh, you know, medieval music of um, the British Isles. So there's this cross fertilization constantly. So this was the, the thought, uh, the thinking process that we were um, following. But of course, since then, and because of the, what we you know, very conveniently package as the Arab Spring, and the funding cuts, and the, the, the project has taken on another dimension. And it's actually moving more towards what um, Lefranco had mentioned before, because it's uh, it's look it's still searching for the parallels, but it, it's also searching for parallels in an atmosphere of complexity and uncertainty, and it's these two big issues have given it another dimension, plus another very important consideration is that we decided back in 2008 that this project will not have a lead curator. We felt that it, in order to try to achieve some of its aims that even the curating had to be collaborative. And in the end we're working with about 15 or 17 curators. And so it's, a, it's become an enormous project and it's a project that's involving over 10 countries. So it's mushroomed and, and we've got participants from the States, from Australia, from, from well, mainly the focus of the project is the, uh, the Eastern Mediterranean and Europe. But now it's actually mushroomed out and we've got a, a representation, an almost global representation, which is probably so much better. So, because of this, it was important to have a network meeting where we had the curators and uh, some scholars come to Limassol and meet and discuss their take on the general concept of through the roadblocks. And we also arranged to take them to the Green Line, because we thought that that was a very important experience for them, to experience firsthand going through the roadblocks. And here's a shot of the, um, some of the curators at the airport, the Nicosia Airport, that has been closed uh, since 1974. And Gannis will more on that. So essentially, this is my introduction about the and about the project. Thank you very much. And I'd like to
plus one to you if you want this or yeah. 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 Our background, at least culturally, and um, Helene kind of mentioned a few things, but um, I've tried to focus more on the arts in Cyprus, and uh, uh, I hope through this talk you, uh, you will be able to gain a bit of an understanding of why we do what we do. Um, okay. Um, before then, thank you to La Franco and Janice for organizing this event and uh, everybody else who worked for this and uh, you are here as well. Um, okay. Cyprus became independent in 1960 after a guerrilla struggle against the British. The independence was imposed upon the community inadvertently by other vested interests, as the Greek Cypriots, who constituted 78% of the population, wanted union with Greece. The politics played on the island then resulted in intercommunal violence in 1963 between Greek and Turkish Cypriots. A Greek, planned, a Greek Janka planned coup against Cyprus government in July 1974 and culminated in a Turkish invasion five days later, at which time the two main ethnic communities were first forced into divide. Although no, no large-scale co violent conflict occurred in the island since then, Cyprus and Turkey are officially still at war, and the status quo is maintained with ceasefire agreements made in September 1974. Being trapped in a, within a looming war environment, not dissimilar to the Cold War experienced by the West and the Soviet <coughs> Union. <coughs> Cyprus art and media were mainly employed to articulate political events and express their, respect, their respective official <coughs> political points of view, which um, uh, became part of the dominant culture for the conflicting communities. Consequently, Cypriot art has been informed by the events of the political landscape and many artists consciously made art particular to their respective communities' political views. <coughs> the comprehension of cause and effect, time and space, has promoted a narrative as the, uh, has promoted narrative as the main method of organizing and making sense of this experience. Although the prevailing model for experimental art continues to be rooted to be rooted in, Euro in the European discourse where most of the Cypriot artists have studied, some of them sit, uh, here at Goldsmiths. The subject matter of these works is, in many cases, consciously local. We live in an environment that does not make social and political sense, so many artworks try to iterate the complex situation of the island. The emphasis by these artists is to create a narrative that distills the Cypriot condition some using humor, and others using the state's promoted <coughs> history. To make a worthwhile contextualization of the Cypriot art scene, one has to take into account the institutional actors in the, wide, in the wider public context. Although art is purchased by the Cyprus State Gallery, very little fun, funding is given directly to works in its development and production and almost no opportunities are created towards its presentation and its analysis or evaluation in a substantial manner, and the few, and the few existing art collectors do not support arts whose political message is not that of the mainstream. Furthermore, the reluctance of the government to pass tax exemption laws for businesses who may fund non-profit NGOs reinforces the official view and the government control over what is presented regarding the political problem. The secret contemporary culture scene has a further obstacle to address. Perhaps understandably, secret <coughs> art production is essentially ideo ideologically predetermined as, in, as the 1974 events are still in living memory of many practicing artists. 
Unfortunately, through education and insistence on talk storytelling, remembrance and propaganda has created a, few, a new generation of Cypriots whose unlived memories materialize often as nationalist views and often give rise to a reactionary advo um, advocacy that we are losing something, but at the same time one cannot see clearly what it is that has been lost as many never had it through primary experience. One could describe the condition of the Cypriot artist as melancholic in the Freudian sense. Although the events of 63 and 74 created a lot of internally displaced people, the strategy of the various governments since then was to ignore and undermine the importance of mourning, a reaction of loss Freud recognizes as normal. Unfortunately, the condition of mourning associated with unresolved trauma developed into a collective melancholy, a reaction Freud diagnoses as a pathological state. The denial to accept the loss is, to, is the root of both conditions according to Freud. Since 74, the official Greek Cypriot position was that we will re return to our lost cities. This view began to disintegrate in the 90s, especially amongst young, young academics, which was accompanied by the increase of bicommunal activities. Interestingly, whilst this new attitude and intercommunal cooperation was developing, a member of the parliament proposed a law stating that expressions of defeatism should be made illegal. Fortunately, this absurd proposal was rejected. The significance here is the official view that as a nation we should embrace the reality of loss until we secure the right of return. In contrast to the Greek Cypriots, the view of Turkish Cypriots was that the 1974 events allowed them to return home. By this version, but this version is also questionable in context to the rights of the individual. What may be stated quite correctly is that both communities are united at their shared notion of <coughs> melancholia. This melancholia is entrenched in the Cypriot psyche and is as much politically induced as it is culturally and historically preserved. Due mainly to the absence of substantial theoretical and critical framework, the Cypriot artist find it, finds it necessary to almost exclusively reference other cultural trends beyond the borders of Cyprus and position their individual creativity on the interpretation of contemporary works beyond their immediate core experience. A mediation determined by internationalization in which will almost always be lacking primary source content in a regional context. Apart from very few avant-garde or experimental artworks, content and form remain as dual, as dual elements within the artworks, with the form being mostly characterized by global mainstream aesthetics. Cyprus does not have a big population, nor, as I have mentioned already, the support structures within the cultural community to establish an international identity and presence, and perhaps herein lies the strength of this small uh, cultural community, whose defined boundaries can be limited, but can also lead to a positive questioning and, res and resistance to claustrophobic dis discontent. If we manage to shed the ideological imposition of the overbearing agenda of the Cyprus problem, together with the liberation from appropriated grand cultural historical narrative and no longer viable ideological agendas, we could and would generate sense of release and triumphant refocus, much in the way of a Hegelian narrative of self-critical, self-aware works, which questions identity and positions embedded, uh, embedded in social critique. More artists could generate autonomous works where the form is a major and essential factor within the content of the national political divisions, suggesting the inevitable responsibility of the individual to question uncertainty. <coughs> Our present situation, excuse me, I should leave the code a bit longer, okay. Yeah. 
Our present situation is in a state of flux, indicating a transformation beyond the superficially coherent and hybrid political ideology that has been marketed as the dominant cultural product. The ongoing narrative through remaining I'm oh, sorry, the ongoing narrative, although remaining in order to communicate meaning pertinent to the changing socio-political and scholastic climate of science. It is within the interplay of white noise and chaos that meaning can be discerned and changed to happen. In times of crisis, melancholy imposes itself, lays down its archaeology, produces its representations, its knowledge and experience. Napoleon once said, you can always recover the space lost, but you can never recover the time lost. That came out of um, uh, a text by John Pike. Um, that's some adverts. I would like to clarify that although the communities of Cyprus have parallel histories, the state of melancholia present, uh, present in everyone has its causes um, from very different readings of history. This short talk was admittedly focused on the Greek Cypriot community, where, uh, which is where I live. Our Turkish Cypriot friends would tell us that their plight is caused by the massacres of Turkish Cypriots by Greek Cypriot extremists in the 1950s and in 1963. Their unsuccessful attempts to create an internationally recognized Turkish Cypriot state and they are worried that they have been a minority in the island during uh, the pre-1974 and this minority status continues even now as the policy of Turkey encourages Anatolian settlers to emigrate permanently to the north and it is they who currently form the voting majority now. You wanted to, uh, was that too fast? Yeah. No, fast? Okay, sorry. That's kind of the last slide, anyway. In conclusion, and I promise to the Satrian paradox, I am always what I am, and I am always what I am not. Cyprus artists, like many of the others and elsewhere, experience this incongruity. The popular idea of the independent and autonomous identity of the Cypriot today no longer exists without adding an ethnic origin prefix, a paradox which ensures that the duality unfortunately remains, but, and more importantly, this incongruity has stimulated an engaging and evolving dialogue through the production of interesting artworks which explore the transformative power of art and its relationship to politics and other social concerns. It is these works which deserve a wider public visibility. Thank you very much.